cross and, and give him thanks today. Mm -hmm. Amen. Luke 17, verse 11. If you can, if you're in here and you can't stand, we, we, read, we stand for the reading of the word. If you can't stand, stand for a moment. We'll pray. And then read. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray that you would move mightily in this place. We pray for an eruption of praise. Mm -hmm. We pray before we leave this place, you will remind us, because mm -hmm. sometimes it's easy to get amnesia, mm -hmm. but that you would remind us how good and how great you are. Yes. Spirit yes. of grace, mm -hmm. remind us of everything you've done to us through us and for us. Yeah. Let us leave here in awe about how miraculous you are and the things you've done in our life. We apologize. Some got up this morning and their eyes opened and didn't realize that somebody else didn't open their eyes. But we thank you for the opening of eyes. We thank you for blood that's running through our veins. We thank you for the activity of limbs. We, we thank you that we're still here approaching a new year. We thank you because we realize many of us went to Ooh. funerals, but we realized it could have been our funeral. Yeah. Oh God, oh God. Yeah. We thank you that you kept us for this purpose, and as you told Esther, for such a time as this, we'll give you glory, honor, and praise. Fill this place and shake this place. Before we leave this place, dance all over this altar. Spirit of grace, we bind everything that's not of you is cut off at the root. The blood of Jesus is against it. We give you thanksgiving now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Luke 17, verse number 11. When you have it, say, I have it. I have it. All right, verse number 11 says, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered at a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves unto the priest. Mm. Now watch this, y'all. I want y'all to get this. And it came to pass mm. as they went, mm. they were healed. Mm. And when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourself to the priest. It came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw mm. that he was healed, turned back mm. and with a loud voice, glorified God mm. and fell now on his face mm. at his feet giving him thanks and he was a Samaritan mm. Jesus answered and said were there not ten cleansed <laughs> but where are the nine mm. they are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger mm. he said to them arise go thy way thy faith hath made thee Hold. I want you to announce the subject with me today and say, neighbor, the subject is the attitude of gratitude. Of gratitude. Amen. Amen. The attitude of gratitude. Amen. 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 We're going to talk about the attitude of gratitude. When I talk about the attitude of gratitude, we're going to break down the text. It really means to be thankful. Uh, and when we talk about attitude, the word attitude, we know what it means. It's the way a person thinks and the way a person acts. All right, all right. I talked about that a few weeks ago, but an attitude is the way a person thinks and the way a person acts. And gratitude uh, is being thankful for something that has been done. It's being thankful for something that has been done. So the attitude of gratitude is, is being the type of individual that when God or somebody else mm. does something mm. for you, you know how to say thank you. Mm. Yeah. Amen, amen. Yeah. Have, I wonder if there's anybody in here, especially men, have you ever done something for somebody and they looked at you like you were supposed to do it? I mean, I mean let's be honest, men. You ever opened the door for a woman and she walked in and kept walking? And your flesh wanted to grab and say, Hey, I opened that. 
And, and so, so sometimes people get things done for them without thanking the other person because we have a sense of, of like, you know, entitlement. It's like people have to do things for us. But when you have an attitude of gratitude, you're thankful for everything that's done. Amen. And I, I'm not the best at it, but I try to thank people for the small things they do. Uh, some of the people around you, especially those that, that clean and do things, uh, I may get on your nerves saying thank you. I say thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Because I realize another individual don't have to lift a finger for you. And so if a person does anything to benefit you, you ought to be thankful. Right. If God does anything to benefit you, you ought to be thankful. Thank you, Lord. Thank and, you. and so Thank we're, we're going to try to develop uh, this day and this year uh, an attitude of gratitude. Amen. Amen. And what I want to talk about in this text, uh, it talks about something that's very powerful. Uh, Jesus begins uh, to, to come into the scene. And the Bible says uh, in verse when you look at verse number 11, it says, mm -hmm. as he went to Jerusalem, he passed through the mist of Samaria and Galilee. The word mist, it literally means, of course, it means the middle. Mm -hmm. Now, this is powerful because when you, when you learn about this, uh, Samaria and Galilee are the place that he walked through. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a place uh, literally where there was tension going on at that time. Mm. And so Jesus walked right through the middle of tension mm. and blessed somebody. Mm. And what that says for me is that no matter what's going on, can't nothing stop God from blessing me. Somebody ought to praise him right there. Hallelujah. And Jesus shows up on the scene and there are ten men that were lepers. Uh, and these lepers, they start yelling out to Jesus, Master, Master, have mercy on us. And they began to say, have mercy on us. And they didn't even go deep and eloquent into prayer. They just said, have mercy on us. Yeah. And, and as they say this, Jesus just simply says, go show yourself to the priest. Yeah. And what's powerful is in this text is that there are 10 individuals right. in this text mm -hmm. that have leprosy, mm -hmm. but out of 10, only one turned back mm -hmm. to say thank you. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus literally is bothered by this situation because he literally tells them, he says, go see the priest. Mm -hmm. And let me break this down. When somebody went to see the priest, in the Old Testament, Leviticus, when somebody had uh, leprosy at this time, the reason they went to see the priest mm -hmm. is so that the priest would pronounce them clean. Right. And so Jesus right. literally was giving them a prophetic word without saying it. Before you even get there, I want you to know you're clean. Right. And so he tells all ten, show yourself to the priest. Mm -hmm. and, and nine of them kept going, but one turned back mm -hmm. and said, thank you. Now watch this. This is powerful. The nine that kept going, they got healed, but the one that turned around and thanked them, they was made whole. Ah. So it's something so powerful that when you say thank you, God will add to the blessing that he already gave you. So the nine, watch this, the nine got a quick fix, but the one got an eternal fix. That word whole is the Greek word soza. It means save, heal, deliver, and complete. So while nine got a little quick healing, one was made complete. I want to declare as we go into this week, somebody through your praise is getting ready to be made complete. He turns around and says, I ain't crazy. I know that I had leprosy. I just got to let you know I got to turn back and say thank you. Is there anybody in here that's not too cute to think about it? God has done for you, the way God has blessed you, where God has brought you from, the sin he's brought you out of, and be glad enough to say thank you. I thank you that I'm saved. I thank you that I'm healed. I thank you that I'm delivered. I thank you that I'm in my right mind. I thank you that I'm not behind bars. I thank you that I'm not under the grave. Can somebody give God a praise break in this place? Oh, yeah, yeah. Before we leave this place, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody ought to be losing their mind when you think about how good God has been. Somebody ought to be 
running through troops and leaping over walls when you think about the goodness and the glory of God. Give God a big hand clap of praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's break the text down. Now watch this. This is powerful, y'all. So it's 10. And, and, and one turn around and say thank you. Now watch this. Jesus, he does things. Jesus will rebuke you on the slide. Jesus literally, he says, you know what? He's moving and he rebukes the other nine on the slide. He said, well, they're not 10. In other words, you know what he's saying? He's saying, where are the nine ingrates? Oh. He said, where are the other individuals? He said, it's something that's mathematically wrong. I, I understand. I, I know something about math. It's, it was 10 that was healed. This, this worrisome plague called leprosy that literally was so bad, you were put out of the camp that was so bad, it blots your skin up. It messed your life up. It turned your life upside down. I healed 10 and 9 kept going. Something is not right with this equation. I healed all ten, but only one came back to say thank you. So he's literally putting an indictment watch this on the nine. Now watch this as I break it down. Y'all know that I break down. I like to study numbers. Numbers is, or the number nine, uh, one symbolic uh, symbolism of nine is finality and judgment. So watch this. It also means birthing. The number of nine is birthing. You carry, you know, a child nine months. So, but it's finality and judgment. So watch this. The nine went back or went to the priest without saying thank you. Mm. Nine is finality and judgment. Mm. The adjustment for not saying thank you was they missed an opportunity to be made whole. Ah. And some of us, God moves, and he does what we ask him to do, but after he do what we ask him to do, we don't take it any farther, ah. so we stop at the process in the blessing chain. Ah. Because what you don't realize, whatever God blessed you with, Ooh. it's more to come. Because they were so happy, they was ready to go see the priest. Oh, God. But watch this, y'all. They were trying to hurry up and go see the priest. This one stop, he said, hold up, hold up, hold up. We got to stop traffic right here. Y'all go ahead and see the priest. I got to turn around and see the king. Because the king is greater than the priest. And some of us, we realize that we will thank man, but we won't thank God. And what you got to do is thank man and God, because God is in control of the man. And you got to say, wherever the other nine does, I'm going to turn around and pause and say thank you. So watch this. Jesus comes and he says, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one came back. And the one that came back and that paused was the one that was made whole. Oh. Yeah. Could it be we still dealing with stuff because hmm. we got touched and healed, but we hadn't been whole oh. because we have a lack of gratitude? Oh. 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 Because watch this, God is into gratefulness and thankfulness. Oh. And if I'm thankful, then God says they appreciate everything that I've done. Thanksgiving is like a fragrance <laughs> in the nostrils of God. Yeah. And so what happens is when we start giving thanksgiving, God says, I'm going to give you more. Because yeah. God never likes an unappreciative child. Amen. There's some parents in here right now. If your child say, oh, thank you, mama, you're like, oh, I'm going to give you a little bit more. But if they sit there like you're supposed to do it, you're like, I'm going to wait a little while. But if they say thank you, then it makes you want to do more. And so what we're going to do is begin to go into a season of thanking God not to get something just because we love him. And we're going to begin to see God do more. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now watch this. What I want to do as we talk about these uh, 10 lepers and the one that came back uh, to say thank you, I want to give us three reasons before we go home. I want to give you three reasons that we have to be thankful. And then I'm going to give us two ways that we can show our gratitude to God. I'm going to give us three reasons. It's right here in the text, y'all. You know we stay in the Bible. It says, And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, he passed through the midst of Samaria, and as he entered into a village, 
they made him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So watch this. They come on the scene, and Jesus is on one side, mm -hmm. and they on the other side, and they from a distance mm -hmm. say, Master, mm -hmm. have mercy on us. Mm -hmm. So watch this. The first reason we ought to say thank you is simple. It's because Jesus has healed us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus has healed us. And I'm going to break this thing down. Jesus has healed us. <laughs> now watch this. I'm going to break it down and make it a little more understandable why this is big, especially for the lepers, because these are three reasons. The lepers should have said thank you, and we should have said thank you. If you study leprosy, if anybody want to go back and do your study, in All Leviticus right. 13, mm. leprosy is described as a disease that literally was dreadful. Mm. Amen. I'm going to break this down. Leprosy was bad. Leprosy was so bad, uh, it found out that if somebody had leprosy, they had white patches on their skin. Yeah. They had patches on their skin, and, and when somebody was deemed to have leprosy, they were treated like an outcast. No. They would literally put that person outside the camp. No. Because watch this, any person they came in contact with, now that person is made unclean. Oh, so right. people who had leprosy were treated like they had the plague. Oh. And so what happened is, not only that, but the only way they can get ushered back into society, mm -hmm. they had to go see the priest. All right. And so when Jesus healed them of leprosy, he didn't just heal them, he gave them their livelihood back. All right. yeah. Yeah. Oh oh. Because they were literally isolated. They yeah. were talked about, they were yeah. criticized. Imagine, watch this, yeah. not only were they, they isolated, but when they came around somebody, they had to announce their presence. Oh. They had to literally say, unclean, unclean. In other words, get ready, here I come. Oh. And so when they stood to fall off, the reason they stood to fall off is because they couldn't get too close to Jesus. Oh. And so for the reason that they stood so far off, Jesus is so powerful, he healed them without them going into detail about what they needed healing for. I want to oh. tell somebody that even if you're not a prayer warrior, oh. even if you're not eloquent with your words, sometimes your prayer can be so botched up, all you know how to say is have mercy. And God will still bring yes. healing in your life. All right. All right. Yes. Now, yes. now watch this. Yes. I said he has healed us. Uh. Some people was like, okay. That's kind of exciting. Mm. But watch this. Some of us haven't been healed physically. Mm. Some of us has. Uh. If you ever been in a place where the doctors say you don't look like you're going to leave uh. and you get healed, no. You know how to turn back. All right. Yeah. 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 All right, see, we may have walked in divine help all our life, right. but I know at least two individuals oh. in here that the doctors gave a pronunciation. It didn't look like it was going to look good, and they still here after a diagnosis of cancer. And I want to know, is there anybody else in here that's glad that even though the doctor said you are sick, that the Bible says by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed and you are made whole. Can anybody praise God that he has healed? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Yes. And so that may even not still be relevant to someone because someone's like, well, you know, I really didn't get no... No bad sickness or, you know, nothing. I ain't go through nothing like that. The old people say, keep on living. <laughs> keep on living. You're going to walk through something. And, and so, but watch this. Even, yo, oh God, even if you wasn't healed physically, the Lord showed me this. If you're saved, you've been healed spiritually. Because watch this. The lepers term that they had to serve when they had it, they had to be distanced from, from everybody else. They couldn't come in contact. When we were unsaved, we couldn't go into the presence of God without a sacrifice. But the Bible says that we have been made nigh 
by the blood of Jesus. Yes. And so now we're no longer strangers. Yes. We're no longer spiritually sick. We've been cleansed. We've been healed. Yes. And somebody in here needs to praise God yes. that your soul has been healed. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Let's go a little bit farther, y'all. Mm. It says they were lepers. Mm. We stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices. Mm. And, and one translation, I believe, says, and they yelled out. So they got loud. Mm. You know, they, they was bothering me loud. Mm. <laughs> they was like, tell your cousin to be quiet loud. <laughs> yeah. You know, they was like, you don't do all that loud. They got loud. Yeah. And, and I remember one, one uh, situation in the text that uh, the disciples got loud and, and somebody got upset and another man was screaming, Jesus, 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 have mercy, Jesus. And he wanted his healing because because when you really need a breakthrough, you don't mind raising your voice. Yeah. See, 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 when, when you really need a breakthrough from God, you don't care about how everybody's looking at you. You don't care about if you look like you're out of out of order. You don't care about who's behind you and who's next to you. The only thing you know is that you need a touch from God. Is there anybody in here that has came to a place in your life that when you think about the goodness of God, you quit worrying about who's next to you, who's in front of you, who's behind you, who's on the side, how tight your wig is. Uh oh, you don't care about if your suit is right, if your tie is tight enough, you just start saying thank you. Can somebody say thank you to God today? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, so watch this. He stood for all. They lifted up their voices and said, Master, have mm. mercy. Mm. Now watch this. Have mercy. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourself to the priest. Now, we've been taught, and I, I teach this, that when you pray, be specific. Uh -huh. That's right. Yeah. But they weren't even specific. Mm. They just had mercy. They just uh -huh. said, have mercy on us. Yeah. And we know that if they were lepers, there were probably visible signs. Yeah. But I say this as a principle in that, that when you're really desperate, God loves us so much, yeah. he realized sometimes we can't fully verbalize what we're trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. And there are times where all you can do is say Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus will show up right where you are. Yeah. See, they didn't have time for abbreviation, annunciation. All they knew is it was time for celebration. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so what, what I'm saying is that is that when you really need God and you cry out to him, he's going to show up. Can anybody thank God that he showed up? Hallelujah. Now watch this. I, I'm almost there. I'm going to give us two more. So the first principle is, is what? Jesus has healed us. Jesus has healed us. The second thing we need to be thankful for, yeah. this is good, y'all, watch this, for his never-ending mercy. Never-ending mercy. Now, let me teach this. Let me break down. And most of us know it, just have mercy. We know what mercy is. But one thing that mercy means is, is when somebody shows somebody attention or, or kindness that they don't deserve. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so when we say God have mercy, mm. we're literally saying give me something I know Ooh, I don't deserve. Don't it. It. Yeah. Ooh, and see if we all be yeah. honest in here. Yeah. When God blesses us, yeah. the things that we have today, yeah. it's not because we've been so righteous. Yeah. It's not because we went to church every Sunday. It's not because we graduated from school soon kulati and karate. It's not because of who we know. It's simply because he had mercy on our soul. Can anybody in here be honest enough to say the reason I'm here is because of the mercy of God? If you done it do right and you did everything right growing up, then you will understand it. But if you did some things that's wrong, if, if you did some sin in your life, if you were like Paul, Paul says, I'm a chief sinner. He said, I did more than anybody else did. 
But for the grace of God, I am who I am.
good old God. There's somebody in here that somebody had the same sickness you had and they gone. And we don't celebrate that they're gone, but we better praise that he left us here. Is there anybody else in here? It's mercy, y'all. It's mercy. I look at old classmates sometimes. And uh, Sister Rhonda don't mind me sharing, but she was sharing with me. She was telling, uh, I grew up with her brother, and she was saying, well, you know, so-and-so. And she was just talking about this individual and, and, and the, the condition an individual is in. And I thought about it. I said, my God, uh, it ain't because I was better. Uh, it's only because of his grace. Hey, hey. Some of y'all have seen this. Some of y'all walked by people that you went to school with and they strung out on crack. Uh, they on drugs. They, 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 they look like they only have months to live. And you and some of us did some of the same things that they were doing. But grace showed up at your address and pulled you out of that situation and showed you a better way. Mercy, another part about mercy. Mercy is not only not getting what you deserve, but it's sometimes getting what you don't deserve. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, right. Thank you, Lord. That's right. See, and I, and I'm going to move on, but, but mercy can be two ways. Sometimes it's not getting what you deserve, and then sometimes it's getting what you don't deserve. And so mercy going to hit you on either side. There's some stuff we should have get, should have got that we didn't get. And some stuff we got that we shouldn't have got. We, just, we, we need to thank God for mercy all the time. Somebody give God a praise. All right, all right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to give you the third thing and try to wrap it up, y'all. What was the first two things? Jesus has healed us. His for God, never ending mercy. His never ending mercies. And, I, and I'm almost finished, y'all. The reason I said never ending, mm. Lamentations 3, mm. it says, if it's what, well, watch this. I'm going to break it down. Lamentations 3, so you can go back and read it. Mm. Lamentations 3, verse 22 mm -hmm. and 23, it says, if it had not been for his mercy, mm. we would have been consumed. All right. All right. Uh, well. Imagine that. It said, if it wasn't for his mercy, we would have been consumed. Mm. And then verse 23 says something powerful. That's why I said never ended. His mercies are new every day. So watch this. Let me break this thing down. God knows that even though we're saved, we still going to mess up. God is a God of provision. And any day you live, you got an opportunity to mess up. So what he says, I provided mercy for every day that you may mess up. So before you even mess up, mercy gives you the ability to get up. Oh, new every day. I'm trying to move on, but quit condemning yourself. Quit feeling bad about stuff you did seven years ago. His mercy was there as soon as you finished. Yes. Oh. Thank you, Hallelujah. Give God yes. another praise. Yes. Amen. Yes. All right, all right. Now what I want to do now, the third thing, I want to give you the third thing, the third reason we have to be thankful and grateful is, is watch this, for the gift of faith. The gift of faith. And I'm going to break this down because... When we look at this off the surface, it'll be like, well, where's that at for the gift of faith? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break it down because watch this. In verse number 14, it says, when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourself to the priests. And it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. Now watch this. I'm going to break down the gift of faith. In 1 Corinthians 12, there are nine spiritual gifts, and one of them is the gift of faith. Now, the gift of faith in 1 Corinthians 12 is a gift that gives you a supernatural ability to believe for things you wouldn't normally be able to believe for. 
I mean, you're just like, I don't know how I believe God for that. I'll give you the illustration. I taught on all, all of these gifts. We're going to do a whole class on it. But Daniel, and even though that was Old Testament, he had a gift of faith. Daniel was in a lion's den, and Daniel still rested because he had faith that God was able to bring him out of the den of lion. And the Bible says because he believed God, God sent an angel and shut the lion's mouth. So I'm not talking about that gift of faith. The gift I'm talking about is whether you realize it or not. Faith is a gift. When we have the ability to believe God for something that we've never had and get something that we can't afford and all we got to do is believe, that's a gift. That's a gift. Because watch this, y'all. Salvation is so powerful. God literally says, oh. there's sin in between me and you, and I'm a holy God. Oh. He said, there's sin. There's a wall of partition in between us, and I'm a holy God. And then Romans 10, 9 says, all we have to do, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Hey. That's a gift. Yes. Let me break this down a little bit further. Faith is so powerful, it'll get you things there's no way you can afford. All right. yes. And all you have to do is believe. Yes. All right, let me break this down in the text, and then I'm going to try to wrap it up. Look at this in verse number 14. It says, when he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. Now watch this. Did Jesus lay hands on them? Come on, y'all. Y'all ready with me? No. Come on, act like we in Sunday school. <laughs> Big to you. Did he lay out? Oh, vacation Bible school. Dog, hot dogs and chili. Did, did he? Y'all know we went. And we ain't going to know the time. Yes, y'all. Watch this. Did he lay hands on them? Did it, was there even a sign that he prayed for them? No. He didn't say anything like, okay, I'm going to say this quick prayer. Jesus, oh my God, I'm almost going to yell. Jesus, I got so excited when I saw this. He did this like Jerusalem mob style, y'all. I mean, he got so much swag. Jesus, he didn't even pray for them. They came and they said, Master, have mercy. Jesus just sitting down. He said, yo, show yourself to the priest. <laughs> <laughs> So go show yourself to the well, priest. Yeah. That's powerful, y'all. Yeah. Because Jesus knew he had the ability to speak a word over their life. Now watch this. If they didn't believe, and if they didn't go to the priest, they wouldn't have got their healing. Faith was a gift for them. And when they acted on the word of God in faith, the Bible says, as they when they were healed. Yes. When God gives you a word right. and you start right. walking on that word, yes. as you go, yes. the power of God is going to show up because they got healed on the way. Yes. And some of you in here believe in God for something. And God says, all you have to do is believe. And that's why the Bible says, and we walk by faith and not by sight. I got to start walking like it's there even before it gets there. I got to believe God that Somebody say, yeah, they win. There's something in here right now. You're worried about something and when you start stepping out on faith and doing what God says, as you start walking to that thing, that thing going to manifest before you even get there. It's somebody that God told you to open another bank account and you're saying, wait, what? And before you even go up there and get to the bank, you're going to get an unexpected something in the mail. As they wait, it's somebody right now in here that got conditions and symptoms in your body and everybody else telling you, well, I think it's daddy. My mama had that and my daddy had that. And you're going 
go to the doctor just to make sure you're all right, but you're going to pray for yourself and put some oil on you that morning. And before you get to the doctor's office, you're going to find out that everything is already all right. Yes, they wish. There's somebody in here right now. God is telling you to open up a business or do something for yourself, and you don't believe you have the ability and the knowledge and the wisdom and the know-how how to do it. But when you start moving and flowing in the grace of God as you... Somebody give God a praise in this place. Yes. These last two things that I'm through, I'm going to give you two things that we need to do to show how grateful we are. I gave you three things that we have to be grateful and thankful for. Now I'm going to give you two things. I'm going to make them real quick because I took enough of your time. Verse number 15. Now watch this. As they went, they were cleansed. Verse 15 says, and one of them, when he saw it was healed, turned back with a loud voice, glorified God. The NIV translation says, praised. Mm. The first thing you need to do, yeah. and I need to do, to yeah. show our gratitude, is start praising yeah. God. Come on, God. Yeah. You Come need to on, praise yeah. God Come on. for everything he's yeah. done yeah. in your oh, life. Yes. Yes. I mean, if God doesn't do anything yes. else, yes. we ought to break out every yes. morning with a time of praise yes. and celebration and yes. thanksgiving yes. and give God glory yes. that we got up another day yes. and give God glory we're still in our right mind yes. and give God glory that we didn't go down last year. Yes. We didn't lose our mind. We didn't lose our marriage. We didn't lose our family. We didn't lose our house. Can somebody praise God for everything? Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 We praise yeah. God with a loud voice. Yeah. Yeah. Second thing, and then we're through, y'all. Yeah. The second thing we should do, and watch this. Uh, I teach, I love prayer. Y'all know that's one of my passions. Uh, when I pray, uh, a lot of times I start my prayer off with, with worship. Sometimes, like even this morning, I sent Minister Collins a, I hear a good song, and I just text it to her because I start off with worship. Because watch this, I thought about this. Uh, it kind of makes me feel bad if I go into prayer and uh, ask for a whole lot of stuff without thanking him for the stuff I always And so I start out with worship. Yeah, yeah. I start out saying thank you before I ask you for anything. God, I thank you that you woke me up another day. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody relate to that? Yeah. It's like, I want to ask him for a whole lot of stuff, but I feel convicted because I have so much already. Yeah. 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 So the first thing is praise. Yeah. The second and then we're through is thank him. Thank him. That, that's it, y'all. It's simple. The second thing we need to do in order to show our gratitude. It's just thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm talking about it. And start thanking him for little stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it don't even have to be big. Don't wait till you get a Cadillac. Thank him for a Big Mac. I mean, thank, thank, thank him every time you're able to put food in your mouth. Yeah. Every little thing I say, thank you, God. You almost have a wreck and don't have a wreck. Say, God, I know that was your angels that came in between me and that book. I know that that was you that did. They don't realize in the back seat, but I know that that was you. My God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. My wife will tell you, we pull up. And I, I, I be acting like we VIP like President Barack Obama or something. We pull up, and, and we pull up in a parking lot, and it, it looks like it just happened all the time. We pulling up, and somebody just start bagging out. I, I say, God, just move that car for us, baby. Thank you, Lord. Is there anybody else in here? Somebody gotta be giving touches for everything. Y'all, as I close this out, I wanted to close out on a song. Uh, I have a. Uh, one of the young, one of our praise team members, and more than one, but every time I would minister something, I would have her sing this song, and then uh, I kind of mess with her because she would add words sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I say, Sha, I want you to do the remix. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And so it's the perfect song for the day. We're going to close it. The song is simply, thank you. Yeah. And, and it, it said this, and I used to just get so excited when she sung this. I'm going to say a few words, and then she's going to sing it. It was by Walter Hawkins. I didn't even know this. But it said, these are the words. Think about these words. It says, it could have been me. Yeah. Outdoors. Yeah. With no food. Yeah. And no clothes. Yeah. Or left alone. Yeah. Without a friend. Yeah. I feel the anointing. Just another tragic number. Yeah. Hey. With a tragic end. Yeah. You didn't see fit. To let none of these things be. Cause every day by your power, you keep on keeping me. Thank you, God. I wanna say thank you. Somebody give God praise in this place. She's gonna sing this.